I came back to the Olympia and that's the first time I got second to Ronnie Coleman. And that's the first time ever in my career I realized I could actually win the Mr. Olympia competition. Alright you guys, back at the Dragon's Lair Las Vegas and I'm here with Jack West. What's up guys? This is a special request from the champ who's sitting right here. <laughs> it's funny because I kept saying you have to shoot this guy and he's like who, who, who and I'm like you see him every day at the lair. Like, Not every you know? day, you, sometimes but, I don't but see him. Pretty often yeah. and when I sent him he's like oh I see that guy all the time and I'm yeah. like you need to go up to him and talk to him because you know I see your content everywhere and obviously it's a good story so so you need to fill him in a little bit on uh, your backstory right so so we saw I saw Jack this week I said hey you want to film for Jay and he said yeah let's do it and Absolutely. we're here Sunday the very uh, few days are right after so Jack tell me a little bit about yourself you're, uh, you're you were in the military right let's start with that yeah I, uh, I served five years in the Marine Corps back in I enlisted in 2014 and went all the way through 2019 uh, had a good time out there. That's kind of when I first initially really started getting into the weights, um, started grinding the gym because there's not there's not much to do on your downtime. I feel like when you're in the core. So there you go. That's what got you started. Oh uh, yeah. Learning. I mean, I, I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, my dad was my football coach, so I was obviously in the weight room prior to joining the military. But then when I when I got in, I got through boot camp and like all the basic training. I didn't really have an outlet anymore. I didn't have football, and I wasn't gonna just, I don't know, play video games after I got off work. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just gar uh, grind the gym, and it just turned into a habit. You're originally from uh, Washington, right? That's where you're yeah, from. Yeah, I grew up in Washington, and then prior to moving out to Vegas last September, I lived in Washington for about two and a half years again, but uh, I had to get out of there. Why did you come to Vegas? Uh, the big reason why I came to Vegas, obviously, like, was the Dragon's Lair, honestly, um, <laughs> which is a funny reason to move. But the way I saw it was, my life revolved around the gym when I was in Washington. I was like, okay, well, my life revolves around the gym. I want to train at a gym that, like, I'd be hyped to go to every single day. And I just wanted to escape uh, the cold weather out in Washington. So I was like, you know what? I know Vegas has a fitness scene. Um, so I was like, I'll bust a move out here. Not a lot of. Not a lot of people that are kind of in my niche of the fitness community are out here. In fact, I wouldn't say like anyone was. So that was another reason why I wanted to come out here, kind of just do my own thing. And uh, it's been working out pretty well. I love it out here. So you've been here for like about a year? I'm so? coming up on a year, yeah. Okay. And and when did you start doing social media? Because you're very active on TikTok and you have your own YouTube channel and stuff. Tell me a little bit about why you started doing that. Uh, <laughs> um, honestly, I, I guess, so like I was saying, I told you the long story earlier. Um, I got out of the Marine Corps and I was going to college and even prior to going to the Marine Corps like I was, I was a terrible student like I'll say it straight I was a bad student <laughs> growing up I'm talking about like C's were like I was stoked if I got a C I was like all right let's go like good job so I convinced myself that I was like I was gonna go to college do the normal thing um, coming out of the Marine Corps and I got like a year and a half in and I was miserable because I just I just wasn't having a good time at school uh, and Johnny came up to me, uh, he's a, uh, you guys, Johnny's my cameraman. He's, he's hey Johnny, what's up, what's what's up man? <laughs> <laughs> he's also my training partner. Um, he came up to me with this app called TikTok, and I was like, what's this? He's like, 
you need to start posting on this like today you guys need to start posting on this like you'll you'll pop off and I was like I wasn't really familiar with what TikTok was at the time so I was like all right well we could do something so we like we, we made a, I forgot what we did I think we made like a protein we shake video. Like a protein shake video, yeah, like shake. something ridiculous. <laughs> a 2,000 calorie protein shake, and we put it on. It was the first TikTok I ever put up, and it got like 200k views, which is pretty wild for a brand new app, you know. So then that kind of like opened up my eyes to like, okay, this app's a little bit different. And then after that point, me uh, and Nino, we we put out probably like three TikToks a day for like four or five months. Like we were we were in. I don't know, grind mode. Rolls, we, yeah. we, were, we were in go mode. And right when we started the TikTok too, I already had like kind of a setup for YouTube because I'd been interested in cameras prior to this. I was like, well, we might as well do them both at the same time. Um, and like, I was really blessed to have success with YouTube simultaneously with TikTok, which uh, can be hard for some people too. Like it, the carryover doesn't always happen. So when we saw the carryover happen from TikTok to uh, YouTube and Instagram, like it was all mingling together, I was like, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go. And we were just, we were in grind mode for probably like a year straight, like videos, 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 videos. And then that's when I moved out to Vegas, was when I actually had a following. I was like, okay, I gotta go do something with this. And I wanted to, I guess, elevate my production of content. So Vegas was the move. You have um, you have a really good build, and, and I even told you off camera that you look more like a bodybuilder than an influencer. Did you ever think about competing? Did you ever compete, or did you ever want to do? I, I get this I get this a lot. Um, like I said, growing up, I was really invested in football and wrestling uh, and just sports. Uh, weightlifting was always kind of like a backseat thing. I didn't have my like it wasn't my main priority. Uh, and then throughout my time in the Marine Corps too, like I love training, but I don't think I ever was like I'm doing this because I want to do a show at some point. I want to be a bodybuilder. Um, I just wasn't really like focused on it like that. I just I just wanted to be healthy and I wanted to perform in the Marine Corps. That was like my main goal. I wanted to be a weapon. That's what I always say. It's like, I just want to be a weapon. I want to be big. I want to be fast. Um, and now I'm a little bit more big than I am fast. I don't really be running anymore. <laughs> but uh, I, I wouldn't say I, I, I would never do a bodybuilding competition. Um, but right now, it's not like a big priority of mine. I just want to drop weight and be functional. Like that's more towards the side of my name. So you were telling me you were doing security back home. You know, yeah. tell me some of the some of the work you've done back home before you. Uh, it, it really, it really wasn't. It really wasn't that cool. Uh, <laughs> it was actually, it was actually kind of. I, I don't want to say it was. I won't say it was miserable, but um, this was when I was up in Seattle, right? And it was right before COVID that I got this job, and it was a pretty sweet gig. It paid, it paid pretty well down in downtown Seattle. Um, but it wasn't like anything, like it was security. We were just uh, security for the Amazon like buildings out there because oh. Seattle is like run by Amazon. Okay. Um, and I remember I'd be like standing out of the garages, like I'm saying, it wasn't cool. It sounds cool, but it wasn't, it wasn't that cool. I'd stand outside of the garages and it'd be pouring rain like all day and we were just in trench coats. It was in Seattle, so it was raining. A lot of rain. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be out there for like five hours in the morning, five hours at night. And that was when we started doing the TikToks too, so. <laughs> I, I was motivated to get out of there. Like I was making good money, but wasn't happy at all. How long did it take between? So you were doing both for a little bit. Once you get, the, so how long did it take for you to actually make a transition, uh, you know, from a regular job to be able to do use social media to actually get sponsors and make money mm -hmm. that way? It was funny. Like even just like thinking back now, it like it, I don't want to say it happened quick, uh, but it happened faster than I thought. Because like I said, we went crazy when we first got into making content. We were pushing out so much stuff. And I was holding on to my job for a while, like I'd say probably like, I don't know, six months. I was making content and still working a nine to five. Uh, and I talked to Gary one day, Gary, uh, Young LA's owner. I was talking to him and he's like, why are you still working? Like, why are you still going to your job? Like, just focus on YouTube, focus on that. And I was like, all right, I, I'll do that, I guess. And it was just weird for me walking away from that. Um, Cause I don't want to say I had security there, but you know, that was my income prior yeah. to making the transition to social media. So it was like a six month curve, which I feel blessed about because I feel like I've heard stories of other people before TikTok came around too. You got to grind, grind, grind. People were doing it for years before they got traction. So, I mean, six months, six months, I it's like six months. But nice. Thankfully, yeah. Yeah. And living in Vegas, obviously cheaper than living over the, uh, Washington. Right? Yeah, Washington. 
it's ran by tech, you know, like the city. So like, uh, it just it just keeps getting more and more expensive. And yeah, it's like really cool and vibey out there, I guess. But I was sick of the rain. Like I was cold all the time. <laughs> it's hard to stay motivated when you wake up and it's just pouring rain every single day. So well, it sounds like That's somebody why, else I know. Why we live in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. the, the question I have for you is what. Who would you look at that inspires you? Like, there has to be some people besides, obviously, you know, he that got you into, you know, doing the content. But who who do you look at? Do you look at physiques or do you look at content people? Do you look at, do you look at any of us, like any of the bodybuilders that have achieved it? Because obviously you're in the gym, so you have like a different, all these different talents, right? Because as a content creator, you have a great physique. You want to focus on business, right? You want to create your own brand, but do you look at anyone for inspiring? I mean, obviously, you train at Dragon, so Flex probably inspires you, but do you look at anyone for certain things that inspire you? Definitely. Um, I would say, I'm like trying to think about wise or Physique wise, I like Mike Menser a lot back in the day. Like, if I had to say a physique that I really like, I you kind of look like him a lot. Like, I was like, Mike Menser's the man. <laughs> When I first kind of got into lifting in the Marine Corps, like I said, I was big on C.T. Fletcher. That was my man. Uh, but honestly, like all throughout the Marine Corps, I was a big David Goggins dude, Jocko, kind of like the military dudes. Um, I see Goggins at the gym, you know. No way. He trains, he trains a kilo club. Oh, I'd, I'd lose yeah, it if I saw Goggins. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, he I'd trains be crazy, man. I, be I believe it. I believe yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It's pretty wild what he does for work. I was I was stuck on him for a long time. I still get motivation from him, um, and I'm not. I don't want to say like I'm. I, I haven't competed or anything, but I definitely am motivated by bodybuilders. Like the stuff that you guys go through, like top level bodybuilders to me is just insane. Like insane. Like, I, the work ethic. You would do great on. You do amazing on stage, right? I think so. If he got in great shape, you would actually. Because he has the size, yeah. and you know he's in good shape, and. What's your diet like? You are you are you really strict on your diet or? <laughs> we're we're are like you a shock value guy. Shock like, value. Do you do a lot of shock um, eating videos or anything. Or? I wish. I wish. No, I probably should be doing more of that. No. Um, my diet has been pretty chill as in like the last few months. Cause like I said, I'm not prepping for a show or anything. I just like performing in the gym. Um, I wouldn't say I was monitoring almost anything I was eating for the last three months or so. I just intuitively eat I guess is what you want to say I try and eat only whole foods um, but as of late like the last week actually me and Nito have entered like a cutting period and I'm eating about 2750 calories right now and I'm basing my diet off of the vertical diet which isn't necessarily in my opinion like the best way to cut because you tend to be kind of hungry when you're eating all those vertical diet foods but I'm more trying to drop weight slowly and get all my micronutrients in and whatnot. I just want to be healthy. That's that's the main goal. So, yeah, uh, I guess that's about what my diet looks like right now. What, what's your long-term plan with this whole bodybuilding slash influencer thing? What, what, where do you see yourself over the next few years? In the next few years? I mean, um, I obviously want to develop my physique further. That's why I came out here. Um, then on the business side of things, I'd love to own my own um, I don't, I don't necessarily know if I want to own like my own brand, but I'd like to drop merch uh, for a while. And uh, down the road, the whole reason why I got into, I guess, social media in the first place was I didn't want to be an influencer. I was like, okay, if I grind, I could be an online coach. Like I can coach people online, run an online business. Uh, and I think that's what I want to focus on in the coming years because I still would love to coach people. Uh, just the way it worked out with, uh, I guess, the come up on social media, I just had to prioritize that right now. Uh, so, yeah, I guess just grow my businesses, grow my physique, and um, just establish myself out in Vegas more, because this is where I'm trying to stay long term. So, I guess just build a legacy out here is the goal. Which sponsors do you have? You have some people you work with, right? Uh, uh, Young LA? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, Young LA. Uh, they were my first sponsor ever. Shout out Young LA, shout out Gary, shout out Giordani, all you guys. Um, they're, they're my clothing sponsor. They're absolutely killing it. And then Gorilla Mind, uh, Derek, More Plates, More Dates. He picked me up, too, a little bit after Young LA. So those are my two main sponsors. Nice. I love them to death. I love working with those companies. That's Great. awesome. Yeah. Champ, do you have any, any other questions? Yeah, man. Glad he was able to get on uh, and <laughs> check it out. I learned a little bit deeper about the, uh, the man. The man.
What was your appeal? What was your appeal to having Jack on? What was? Uh... I don't know. I mean, I just I see his content out there, and I follow the content a lot. Yeah. Like, especially the younger guys coming up. Yeah. And everyone has like their own thing, right? What they do, and you know, remember for me, I was I had to be great to be featured and be popular. You remember the magazines? I mean, to be someone that graced the magazines, you had to achieve something like on the stages, and it just the intriguing thing to me now is how these guys can create content and they all have their own way of doing it and they build that momentum and you don't realize like TikTok and all these platforms, you, you know, YouTube, it tells a story behind everyone. So I just, you know, listen man, I, the physique, I mean, he's... Yeah, he looks great. He's one of the bigger guys, you know, that I see. So I always want to, I wonder how these guys work out and what they eat and, you know, where they come from, the genes and obviously the military is like huge yeah, for me. Yeah. I grew up military background, like not myself, but my whole family was military, so that's why I'm so, uh, uh, that's appealing to me to support that, because I know it means a lot to the guys, and, you know, we got to uh, go to a lot of bases together, yeah. so. It you does, know. it really does mean a lot. I remember, like, people were, people were hyped when you were pulling up the Pemberton, hyped, <laughs> and that, yeah. So Shout out to the military, man. Yeah. Shout out to the military, man, for sure. Well, Jack, we want to say thank you for coming on JTV, man. Congratulations. And if you have... Just in conclusion, if you have any, um, what would be the best advice for you for those new newcomers who who want to start their TikTok and their Instagram and their YouTube okay. presence? What would you say is the most important thing for them to do to be successful? Okay, that's a good question. I get this is like one of my favorite questions to answer because I get this a lot from the younger dudes. And honestly, like I always just tell the people to start, to start, to start, because I wanted to do this for a year. I didn't start until I was like 20. I just turned 26, 25. I don't know, something like that. Um, and I put it off for a long time because it might seem like such an unachievable goal, but I promise you it's really not. If you treat it like a job and you do the work and you put out content, especially in today's age on TikTok, if you put out three talk, if you put out three TikToks a day for three months, I guarantee you you will have a following. It might not be massive, but you'll have a following. So my biggest piece of advice is just get on it and make content that you appreciate, that you like, and put it out and see the reaction from people. Don't try and copy other people's content. That's not the move, just be yourself, be original. And the more content you put out, I guess the better the better you'll get at it. And you'll see, you'll see. Just, just put out the content, don't be afraid to do it. All right, wise words, all right? We're gonna, we're gonna keep following your, uh, your, uh, your uh, journey in Vegas and uh, Hopefully, much more, uh, much more sponsors coming your way. Yeah, that's a good one. And then maybe a bodybuilding show in your future. Who knows? <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna have to at some point. Yeah, I keep saying we'll see, but yeah, I'll, I'll we're, step on stage at some. We're point. gonna have to have you back on JTV to compete. All right, for sure. All right. I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen. All right, Thank guys. you guys. Thank you so much.